And 600,000 assembled vehicles in South Africa is not, it's not small. We are by far the biggest producer on the African continent. And although we produce less than 1% of global production, we still sit in the top 20 in terms of uh, aggregate vehicle producers. Um, localization has regressed over the past 10 or 15 years, and I think the points come out. But as part of the auto's master plan development process, and uh, Michael, you referred to the, to the steel master plan. Uh, the auto's master plan was, was, a, was a product of a fairly detailed uh, research industry engagement process. Uh, well, there's a common term, robust. It tended to be very robust at times. But the point being, at the end of it all, the stakeholders within the sector, ourselves as component manufacturers, Labor was a very important part of it. Musa was, uh, was engaged through the whole process. Uh, our counterparts, the OEMs, as represented by NAMSA, it's pretty much my, my colleague Mike Mabasa was not able to make it this afternoon. Uh, and the lead department who we work with in the sector, the DTI, came out with a level of consensus of what we want the sector to look like over the long term. Um, a set of six objectives was put up in one of uh, Dr. Ade's slides. I think the most important from our perspective, and I suppose everyone sitting here, is a strong commitment to localization. There's a target out there, 60% localization, and I've been in countless conversations. 60% by serious, we'll never get to 60%. I'm saying this quite openly, whether we get to 60%, whether we get to 62% or 55%, it actually doesn't, it, it's, 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 a, uh, it's an objective, it's an aspiration for the sector to get there at some, uh, at some point in the master plan process. But what we needed was an objective and a policy that then spoke to that. So what happened? We agreed on these objectives, and then we looked at the incentive program, and what the APDP is today, what some of, what some of the, the warts uh, around the APDP was, and how that could then be tweaked. What that then resulted in was a set of policies that will be implemented uh, from 2021, which categorically places localization uh, at the apex of how business models are going to run. What do I mean by that? Um, <clears throat> there will now be a wide emphasis on widening and deepening the value chain or deepening localization. There's going to be a big role for the OEMs to play, but also uh, we can't uh, not look at, at least from, from my perspective, Nokia is uh, the recognized voice of component manufacturers and typically right now in South Africa that's dominated by uh, multinational tier ones who've come here on the back of OEM assembly. Long story, we've got to look at that tier one base as well and find ways of deepening their own levels of local content. So a big responsibility on the, on the, on the tier ones who are uh, currently supplying there. Growth of that tier two base, supplying into the tier one assemblers, uh, really important. And I, I, I think this point cannot escape any of us. If we don't address that lower tier, tier two, tier three material supply, part of the value chain, we're never going to have a competitive manufacturing base. We'll have strong assembly, we'll have assembly of components and, and uh, uh, systems, but we're never going to get deep competitive. So it's really important. At the moment, our sector has this kind of weird, uh, like, diamond shape. We've got OEMs at the top, then you've got a very big base of tier ones, and then following out. And I'm sure many of you would uh, identify with, with that following up process. Um, what's changed post 2021 or post 2020? There's effectively an assembly incentive that the OEMs currently get under APDP, which is just that. It's a pure assembly incentive. As long as there's a minimum volume of vehicles that come off the line at whichever assembly plant, uh, there's a bunch of duty credits that get processed and OEMs are able to drop their customs account, effectively monetizing the investment or incentive. The next phase of the program will tweak that assembly incentive in some way and exclude all imported content. 
um, with the natural outcome being uh, OEMs looking to chase more local content in order to ensure, ensure that their incentive levels uh, remain very much where they are at the moment, if not global. Uh, similarly, there's an increase in net award value uh, in the production incentive from typically what's now about 10% to a net 12.5%, and this can uh, also be expected to have a positive impact on global content. Um, lots of statistics came out in the previous presentation. I've given uh, the theory behind it. There's an economic theory, kind of reshape and assembly incentive, exclude imports, and you should have an up on impact on localization. Besides theory, practically what's happening on the ground. Um, the policy framework is set, uh, and I think as OEMs look to chase high levels of manufacturing value addition, uh, even the metals and engineering space becomes really important in that discussion. Uh, there's probably been a lot of, a lot of uh, during the course of this event, uh, people raising around the challenges of operating in a global auto space. We would have heard about raw material constraints, we would have heard about uh, lack of volumes, we would have heard about transformation challenges, uh, utilities. I don't think that's news or new news to anyone. Um, often valid, not discounting them, but I think sectors all over the world face those in one guise or the other. It's more about how does industry partner to address some of these challenges. And I'm talking about both private and public sector. Maybe I could share some statistics of my own, Dr. Ade, uh, not as numerous as yours, but I think uh, kind of pointing a picture about where the sector is going. My own organization does a quarterly pulse check on localization rates in South Africa. Quarter 2, 2019 over quarter 2, 2018 saw 12% quarter over quarter growth in OEM direct sales in South Africa from a diverse sample of component manufacturers. 17% uh, to the OEM parts and accessories market. We also work in partnership with an industrialization consultancy for BNM analysts and deli deliver an annual uh, state of the SA supplier benchmark report, uh, typically comparing us to countries in uh, other emerging auto spaces, Eastern Europe, uh, East Asia, uh, South America. In 2018, it was found that the appetite from OEM buyers for localization, either at greater volumes of existing product or finding new sources of local content uh, was at uh, an all-time high, meaning the OEM buyers were scurrying around looking for new localization opportunities. For me, that's no coincidence to the fact that there was about to be a major policy shift. So the data is telling us a positive story around generalized localization rates. What about actual firm level experiences? Allow me to share three different examples. All companies in the metals engineering based component space, and uh, they were okay with me to share their names. Company one, a company called SP Metal Forge. Um, about 15 years ago, this claim to fame of this particular company was forged tokage related product and accessories. Today, SP Metal is one of SA's most successful tier two companies supplying locally and exporting. Forged products into one of the largest drivetrain tier one uh, manufacturers in, in the US. Uh, SPM has achieved approximately 50% growth on total turnover over the past two years and has an expectation of doubling or 100% growth on local contracts in the next three years at both tier one and OEM supply. Company two, really interesting, a company called uh, Auto Industrial, typically in the casting and machine component space. Growing into one of uh, South Africa's most prominent auto holdings, had the distinction of being involved in the research and development and prototype phase for an OEM supply on a new generation pickup uh, of steering knuckles, which is a, a fairly safety critical component. 
now running three ships across different lines, including direct exports to Thailand. Uh, the opportunity with Auto Industrial unlocked on the back of uh, significant investment. Uh, volume growth, obviously, from the OEM plant that was being supplied. Uh, well supported by government policies. And importantly, an ability to build and support the tooling requirements domestically. Third one, and uh, I threw this one in after a conversation I had earlier this morning, a company called Wekawa Engineering. Currently black owned, history of supply into the mining industry, took a strategic decision about two years ago to get into the auto's value chain. I, I know the story really well. It was a long, hard journey to prove OEM qualification. Numerous meetings of trying to get into purchasing departments. Hey, the mayor, these guys don't want to talk to me. Can you find a way to elevate it? You've got to talk to the purchasing executive. Hey, why are the junior guys not talking to them? And, uh, the typical challenges that are faced by smaller companies trying to, be, trying to break into bigger value chains. Um, they have to quote on a whole lot of different products. Uh, exhibit at various spaces, including an event that, that my organization runs in Arcam Show. Uh, get the material standards correct. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. It's not easy to simply walk into an OEM contract. Uh, so anyway, I got a call from Neil this morning to say that they've now got an OEM letter of supply for oxygen sensors into the exhaust system. So I'm not trying to paint a picture of milk and honey, but where companies are putting in the effort is clear significant growth outcomes in different spaces. Uh, I've got a bit of time and Mike reminded me of something by the end. I've given the perspective from theory, backed it up with a few stats, and I've given you some anecdotes of companies that are doing work in space. But that's very micro level, that's direct participation. Something that I found really interesting. And how are others viewing this sector? Uh, for the first time, and I've been, I've been interacting with the sector for, for a very long time. Over the past year, I've had to do presentations to all four of the major banks in South Africa. And we were part of one of them. But I've done it to all four. And all four of them had the same message. Corporate investment banking teams together with their product development. For some reason, each of them are saying we're really bullish about the auto sector. How do we get involved in financing the various parts of the supply chain? That's never been a discussion we've had before. Banks have always looked at resources, agriculture, always had specialist teams uh, going into those sectors. Now they're actually looking to develop specialized products for autos, typically supplier companies. And they're not doing that because they had a dream. It's because there's real potential in the sector. Um, so I suppose uh, my message is fairly clear if you haven't picked it up already. I think the outlook is positive. Yes, there are challenges, um, but there are companies in your sector who are progressing well. They use the system, they maximize government support, they partner with structures uh, Typical example, and see the tooling initiative. Uh, they get involved in formalized business support activities, representative structures, uh, find ways of dealing with the utilities issues, whether they're taking the Kulreni Metro to court or whatever it is they do, they find ways of dealing with it. Uh, they adopt a growth mindset. They invest in skills and technology. Um, so I suppose ultimately what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, our supplier base, uh, especially some of the companies in the metals and engineering space, uh, and I don't know if I'm preaching to the converter here, but need to adopt a mindset that takes them towards growth outlook from what has typically been for a long time maintenance on the back of low levels of local content. I suppose we'll have some time for discussion, but uh, that's effectively the message that I was looking to share uh, with yourself this afternoon. Thank you.
it seems the time is now, so get out there and start prioritizing, I suppose. Uh, uh, I think uh, the message is very upbeat. I think you should produce a white paper <coughs> called Eight Things to Do to Succeed in the Mosey Industry Right Now.